All right, I'm still working on electronics on R2-D2 here, but uh, part of the electronics is making sure that the electronics board will fit back here and be able to be lowered. Um, you can see the holes in here. So the electronic board fits between this side and this side where the holes are. It has spring latches, one left and one right that'll bolt to the bottom, and then one top left that'll bolt here. So if you pull that spring latch, you'll be able to lower the electronics board if you need to access something on the back, which is because um, there was no version of this cut version to fit on my printer that had a back door when I printed this. There is now, but there wasn't when I printed this, so this does not have a removable back door. So in order for that electronics board to fold down, it has to clear this motor bracket, motor frame here. So you can see this piece here that the motor bolts to, the dome motor, comes down quite far. So I had to make sure that my board, when it comes down, won't hit this, which it does not hit that. It's, it's good. So um, I only printed this a couple days ago because I hadn't got a slip ring yet. It comes in different sizes, uh, 24 millimeter and 13 millimeter for this piece depending on the size of the slip ring you get. About a 22 millimeter slip ring, so you're supposed to use the 24 millimeter motor frame. Now, one issue I had with that is the motor. Um, I am using 24 volt uh, Palalu, sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, motor with an offset shaft. So the shaft does not come out of the middle of the motor casing. That's so that you can rotate the motor and it makes the shaft move in or out as you do that. So you can adjust where the gear is by twisting and turning the motor. Now, this is an aluminum bracket. Um, Jason Charlton ordered this same motor and this had to use this bracket so I ordered this bracket like he did but when you bolt this bracket in I only have half the screws in there because I'm just testing with it right now um, when you bolt the motor to this bracket it's either going to be with the shaft all the way in the back or the shaft all the way in the front so you won't be able to turn it to fine adjust how close it is to your gear. So uh, I'm not exactly thrilled with that. So um, I printed this bracket which is made for motors with offset. I keep calling it a bracket. That is the frame. I printed that frame which is made for offset motors and I printed this bracket which is made for 37 millimeter diameter motors. So I bolted this into there with the motor and unfortunately I found that it was so close pressing on this gear it was just, I mean it, it, it would have worked but it was just a little bit too much pressure it needed to move back a bit and that was with the shaft all the way in the back so there was no more adjusting of the motor that I could do to get it to move back so I am reprinting this bracket right now I just took this bracket into my Prusa slicer and I dropped about an eighth of an inch of it down below the print area sliced it and am printing it now so it's basically printing with about an eighth of an inch less thickness in this base plate which I don't think is going to affect how strong that is that is a super thick base plate there and losing an eighth of an inch I, I don't think is going to have any big impact on the strength of this bracket so that will move the motor back and in fact I should be able to use 
the rotate the motor in here to get it just where I want it because it's I swear it was probably only maybe a sixteenth off from being right where I wanted it so I think taking about an eighth off of this and I just eyeballed it I didn't actually measure it was one eighth in the slicer I just took it to about that it might be a little bit more it might be a little bit less so I'm hoping that that will get it far enough away from this that I can use this frame that I printed and then the other version of this bracket. There is another problem though in that I need the gear in the motor to be a bit higher and this only has four holes and you can't see it. You can see one of the holes right here but this this piece of the motor frame only has four holes. So you have two adjustments. You can put it this way against that bracket, or you can put it this way. And so one of them will get the motor higher, and the other way will get the motor lower. So I did the one that would get the motor as high as it was would go, and I still wanted it to be a bit higher. So for that, I think what I might end up doing is drilling four more holes in this part of the bracket that allow me to move this higher so that the motor will have enough height. In fact, hopefully I'll be able to do that to the point where I can slide the motor further down because I had the motor pretty high up in this bracket and the part that's 37 millimeters in diameter is only that much and I think I had the bracket up to about here. So that's what this thing is clamping so what I'd rather do like I said is drill four more holes and see if I can get this bracket more up higher. So that's that's plan one. Fall black, <laughs> bleh, fall back plan is Jason is not using this motor frame with these bump outs here, he is using just the motor frame A 24 millimeter from the looks of it. And then he's got this mounted to it and it looks like it lined up just right for him. So that's my second option, but it's less time to reprint that bracket that I modified than it is to reprint this. And either way, I'm gonna have to drill holes because these holes are not the same. Um, distance apart as the ones on that motor frame. So yeah, kind of involved, but got my ring on, did the modification with bolts here that Jason Charlton did, because with these bolts screwed down so that they're above this ring, there's too much of a gap between the dome and the body. So the same thing Jason Charlton did, he's got the same granite earth dome and printed the same granite earth ring, is he cut the openings there a little bigger and then used pliers to pinch the nut down so it's flush with the plastic there, which lets the dome sit lower so I found I had to do the exact same thing. So, after doing that, I got this out. This ring that has been printed again for a year or two. And I haven't touched. And I welded all the seams together. So it looks pretty nasty now, but... I'll be sanding and adding filler there. The reason I did that is there were some gaps and by melting the plastic together that's going to seal it up and then when I put filler on it the filler won't crack because it won't have big gaps behind the filler. It's, it's welded together um, PLA. But the thing I did have to do outside, the first work I've done on plastic for R2-D2 outside since last fall involves um, how this goes on. 
And you can see right here, this end here is where the hole was, right? These holes are for the ring there. These holes are for these posts that come up through the Lazy Susan. So the same problem Jason Charlton had is this ring, he just cut from the outside of the ring in so that all of these now fit. So instead of dr just drilling a second hole, which is hard to do when the first one is, is right there at the top, he just cut that into a slot. And because this fits evenly all the way around the droid, even though it's a slot, it doesn't have it doesn't have a ton of play. It fits on there just fine. So the reason that like I said the the nuts in the ring he recessed them is because you can see here look at how nice and close that ring is to the body very small gap but if you don't recess the nuts in that gear ring at least with this setup the granite earth setup it was about that high because it lifts it up the thickness of that bolt because this ring is then sitting on the bolts the six bolts and it sits up a little bit too high but if you recess those bolts it's now sitting on that gear ring and it gets it really close to the body in fact so close that I'm getting a little rub right there, if you can hear it. The very back of the droid, the ring is just barely rubbing on the back panel there. Now, I'm pretty sure I can fix that. There is a place there for a bolt that holds the ring it's called the top ring. It's the one that bolts to the body. And I don't have a bolt in it. So I'm pretty sure all I have to do is put a bolt and a nut and it will pull that back end down just a little tiny bit it needs so that doesn't rub. The other thing, you can hear it rubbing and then it stops rubbing. So that means there's an area here of this ring that's probably a little low. So I might be able to take this ring off and sand a bit off of the bottom. In fact, it's a bit rough because I melted, melt welded the plastic down there and I haven't sanded it smooth. So that's part of it too. But I mean, it's, it's only like two places around the ring that are rubbing and it's just barely rubbing so really you probably wouldn't even hear that and it's not scraping enough to interfere I don't think with the movement once the dome is on but I will look into making sure I've got things sanded and if I have to maybe adding a washer a thin washer over one of these bolts whichever one has the uh, piece of the ring that's just a tiny bit low so it might have to lift just a little bit a bit of the ring as it goes around but other than that it's yeah really liking the gap um, spins good this is just a stock granite earth Lazy Susan, they pre-drill it for you, um, but it doesn't have the Durlin um, plastic bearings. This is just running off the normal bearings with the grease that they put in it from the manufacturer. Um, this ring I also uh, welded together. 
And then just because this is the first day I've done this, this is a dome that I did in 2017. I've got some issues that I can't seem to get as round as I want. Spent a lot of time on it trying to get it where I was happy with it. And in the end, just not quite able to get there. This area here is just a pain in the neck. It's too high here. It's too low here. Um, probably just being way too finicky, but the last time I worked on it, I heard a slight crack. Um, I don't see one anywhere. So... Um, I'm thinking that maybe it was maybe one of the ribs inside where the two pieces are glued together that just some of the glue let go or something, but I ended up printing another dome. So I've got another dome that will be my final dome, but the funny thing is between the same two pieces on the one that I reprinted, they don't seem to quite line up. And I think it might be because it's the back and I have to look at an art picture of R2 because it's been so long. I think this is the back of the droid. So I think I started at the front gluing them together. So if anything didn't mesh really well, it would be in the back. And I think I did that for both domes. And I think that's why I have the same two panels that I'm having an issue with. Just because that's the back of R2. I think. <laughs> anyway, um, wanted to keep this a bit short, uh, but yeah, this is today the first time that R2 has had his dome on. This is the first time I have had all of the major parts making up his full height. So, uh, feels good to be making some progress. Um, I, I literally, I, I did pretty much nothing. For the five months I was waiting for my circuit board to arrive from Germany before I finally just gave up and started using the other hardware. You can watch some of my past uh, few videos if you haven't to learn about that. But basically, yeah, I was going to order a board from Germany for the electronics and it took five months to get here and so I was just kind of between the bad weather where I can't paint and waiting for that main board to figure out my electronics, I didn't do pretty much anything to R2 for a good five months. But now I am back on it, uh, mainly, like I said, working on electronics now, uh, waiting for it to still get warmer before I start doing any more of the painting work. And I've got a lot of electronics work to do. But just wanted to show uh, some of the progress I made today. And yeah, R2 with his dome on and standing on his own for the first time.